Hi, my name is Moira and I'm a staff member here at the Hamilton Military Museum. Throughout 2020, masks have become a very important part of our everyday lives. Not only are we using them for protection, but we're also using them to get through our day-to-day -day work and school and even out to do errands. Now, believe it or not, soldiers throughout time have also had to use masks for their protection in their daily lives. Just over a hundred years ago, in 1916, during the First World War, soldiers had to use masks for protection against a chemical weapon of warfare. This was the first type of chemical weapon to ever be used, and it was a huge surprise to the troops that were attacked with it. To attack a line of troops with poison gas, the chemical weapon, you would actually take canisters and you'd throw them into no man's land or into the trench system. The gas is quite heavy and it hangs low to the ground, so it's actually going to sink into the trenches where all the soldiers are, and unfortunately it's going to attack them at that location. Chlorine gas was the first gas to be used as a chemical weapon. It was used in 1916 to attack the Allied forces. Chlorine gas was very difficult to see and it had devastating effects. As soon as the soldiers breathe it in, it causes damage to the soft tissue of the body. So the eyes, you'll actually become blind. It attacks the mouth, the throat, the lungs. It actually liquefies your lungs. So it's very, very, very caustic and very, very dangerous. Most of the men had lasting effects or unfortunately death. At this time, asphyxiation was normal because you actually suffocate from your lungs melting with this chemical weapon. It was very, very devastating. The second main chemical weapon that was used was mustard gas. Now, mustard gas works very similar to chlorine gas and has all those same effects, but unfortunately, it also targets the skin. So soldiers were told that if they could protect their eyes and their respiratory system, they would survive a gas attack. But at this time, mustard gas actually changed that. So not only was it hitting you in the eyes and the throat and the lungs, but it would actually burn and blister your skin. So any exposed skin or anybody that was out in a prolonged effect of mustard gas, the gas would leach through your clothing and it would actually burn and blister you. So at this time, if you were to get that injury and you lived in the trenches, you would probably get an infection and it would become even worse. This was a terrible weapon to be used. Now, not only did it cause clearly physical damage to the troops, but it caused massive psychological damage on a huge scale. Everyone was terrified of the effects and clearly protection was necessary for them. Luckily for the allied forces, there was a method of protection that was developed quite quickly. Now it's a little bit gross because they were actually told to urinate on a piece of clothing or a piece of cloth. And they were told to use that and put it over their face, their mouth and their nose to help protect them. There's ammonia inside your urine. And so when you breathe through that, it would actually help to filter the air to keep you safe. Now this was like tacked like chlorine gas. And so this is actually what was used at first to keep them safe. It's disgusting, it's degrading. Can you imagine having to pee on something and put it on your face to save your life? But unfortunately, that was honestly how they had to keep themselves alive at this time. Now, luckily for them, as gas attacks became more frequent, they started to develop better mass as they went through the war. So the second mass protection to be used was this mask right here, which is a PH helmet. So maybe not the best mask we've ever seen, but definitely way better than having a piece of urinated cloth on your face. As you can see, it's quite large. It would actually go right over your head. You would tuck it into a shirt and it actually has chemical layers of fabric they were soaked in chemicals, and you would breathe through that to protect you. So kind of like a balaclava, just goes all the way over your head. So a little bit better, but still not quite as advanced. As we move through time, they become better and better. So here we have an example of one that is a much newer model. And as you can see, it actually has a canister on it, and the canister actually unscrews. So you'd put this over your head very easily, strap it on, and you'd breathe through the canister. The canister has filters inside of it, so you're filtering that air as you breathe. If it becomes expired, you just unscrew it and you screw a new one on. So way easier for the troops to be able to put this on easily. So throughout the First World War, they also used masks on military animals. So to help keep them safe, they actually had masks designed to put on horses and donkeys and even dogs. 
This, of course, would help protect them from a potential gas attack. Not only was it used for all military personnel, everyone actually went through rigorous training and even went through daily activities wearing a mask the entire time to make sure that they could potentially communicate or fight while having a mask on. So they really prepared them to wear these masks all the time. Now, we all know something about wearing masks in our daily lives and having to do daily tasks with them on. Throughout, of course, our year, we've had to get used to wearing masks for anything we have to do. And similarly to the soldiers, we would use them for protection. Now, luckily, we were able to filter through maybe germs and bacteria to help keep us safe and a little, little nicer than wearing something like a pH helmet, for example. But we're very, very lucky that we are not using these masks to help filter out a deadly chemical weapon of warfare.